Today is day number 39 in our meditation and we meditate today on the first part of the fifth glorious mystery which is the coronation of the Blessed Mother in heaven. In, in our past meditation uh, we meditate on the assumption of Our Lady into heaven and I just remember right now that one day I was praying my rosary and meditating on that, on the Assumption and the Coronation of the Blessed Mother in Heaven. As I was meditating and praying my Hail Marys, suddenly I had a vision, and I'd like to share that with you. It was a beautiful vision, and it helped me so much to understand a little bit better the presence of the Blessed Mother with us here on earth, inside our church, and in our faith. At that time, as I was praying, like I said, the, the rosary and meditating on these mysteries, all of a sudden I saw in this, this vision, it was an inner vision, and I saw like a little house. It had probably five to six steps into this room, and in the room, it, it was the Blessed Mother was laying on a bed, and there was St. John next to her, holding her hand, and he knew that this was the these were the last moments of the blessed mother on earth and he was crying and he was squeezing her hand and telling her not to leave him don't leave me blessed mother don't leave me mother and he was crying and she would just look at him and and smile at him suddenly she closed her eyes and uh, her hand went limp and he let go of the hand and, and he knew, he probably thought that she was dead. So he came out of that room uh, trying to run and uh, call some of the other disciples, I believe. So when he went down the stairs, he was crying, and but he tried not to let other people see him crying. So he would cover his face and, and try to put his face down so people would not see him that he was crying as he ran towards uh, looking for the other disciples, I believe. At that time when he left, I saw the tiles on the roof of that little room um, just lifting and lift, lifting up and coming to the sides. So all of a sudden there was this big hole in the roof and two big angels, bigger than, than a human, than a person, came down through that hole and they lift up Mary's body still uh, laying down and took him out, out, out and started going up with her body. By this time, John and some of the disciples came over to the room and they found the bed empty and they found this big hole on the, on the roof. So they look up and they see the angels taking the Blessed Mother up into heaven. And at a certain distance from earth, the one of the angels held her feet and the other angel um, gently uh, stood Mary up holding her back and the Blessed Mother opened her eyes and smiled. She looked down. She could see the disciples there, her beloved John and all the other disciples that were gathered there in that little room. And she looked down and she smiled at them. And even though it was a certain distance, um, in space, the disciples could see that she was smiling at them and she was looking at them and they felt this sense of peace and, and happiness. And the angels continued to take Mary up, up, up until it disappeared from, from their sight. I thought it was a beautiful vision. And then I said, how wonderful it must have been that time when Mary went to heaven, when the angels came and took her into heaven. And then I, I believe that maybe Jesus came down to, to meet her and to bring her into heaven to, her fa to his father. And I could just picture that great happiness of the two of them just looking at each other and that heart of the mother and the heart of the son so happy to 
to see each other and then he, our Lord Jesus taking her into heaven and crowning her queen of heaven and earth. It must have been a wonderful, wonderful moment. And I don't think that we, any of us humans, will fully, fully understand this until we go to heaven. Because it will be until then that our mind will be more clear to understand God's redemption, God's plan in our life. And in God's plan in choosing this wonderful human being, this wonderful woman, to, to be the mother of his son. She truly deserves to be the queen of heaven and earth. She's the most powerful queen that ever exists. And she's alive. Even the angels consider her a queen because she was crowned queen of heaven and of everything that exists in heaven. So the angels bow down to her as their queen. And for us, she is our queen and she is our mother. It is so sad to, to see that through the generations, um, sometimes um, the confusion or misunderstanding may have caused pain to our Blessed Mother. But we are so grateful to be her children and to have her as our Queen. I would like to invite you in the name of our Lord Jesus to pray with me to thank God one more time for the Blessed Mother, for being crowned Queen of Heaven and Earth, but also to ask forgiveness for all those offenses that have hurt her immaculate heart all through generations, for all those people that doubt or that reject her and offend her. And I also like to pray for those little children that have no mom or have no, no parents. Those children who are rejected by their loved ones, especially mom and dad. A child is a child until I believe on, from beginning from the first time that God gives life to that child in the womb of the mother until probably the age of 25. And uh, in the scripture, we hear that the Lord says, Let the children come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As adults, we have to protect the life of the children, and we have to teach them to know God and, and bring them to our Lord. The same scripture says that Jesus wanted to lay his hands on the children and bless them. So he asked that we bring them to him so he could lay his hands and bless them. And many of us have failed on that. We have committed the sin of omission or, or maybe we didn't know it was a sin. We didn't know how we could bring these children to God. I'm not talking about our children or those children that we know, our, our relatives that are in our families or or maybe our neighbors. I'm talking about all the children in the world. It is our obligation as adults to protect their life and to bring them to our Lord through our prayer, of course. And if we have not done that up to this moment, let us repent of that sin, acknowledge that we have sinned, that we have committed that sin of omission as adults, and now bring them to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to remind us every day to pray for the children, whatever age they may be, for all the children in the world. Bring them to our Lord Jesus through our prayers. It is so beautiful to have somebody pray for you, especially those children, like I say, who have been rejected, they need our prayers. It is the best way that we can help them by bringing them, bringing them to the Lord. So 
our Lord Jesus can hold them so the Blessed Mother can hug them and they could feel that love of mother and father. They could have that protection. They could have that help that they need. And they receive in their hearts the love that they need to continue on their life. So that when they become adults, after they're 25 years old and they become adults, they can be these adults that can bring the kingdom of God to other people, to all the parts of the world. That is our mission as adults. Protect the life of these children from the beginning of life. Pray for them to be protected. Teach them to know and to love God and then bring them to God. Bring them to our Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I ask this person who is looking at this video right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to lay your hands on this person, whether it's a child or is an adult. And as we pray, please send forth your Holy Spirit to bring healing, comfort, peace, protection, and to give all that they need, my Lord. All that they're asking, bring answer to their prayers. Lord, and we lift up to you all the children in the world. We thank you, Father, for giving us the Blessed Mother as our mother and our queen. And now we bring to your presence all the children in the world from their beginning of their life. Those who are beginning their life right now in the womb of their mother and all the children all over the world. We bring them to you. We ask for your blessing and your protection. And we ask that they receive from you, Lord Jesus, the love that they need to continue in their life. That they receive the companionship and the wisdom of God, Holy Spirit, and the love they need from the Blessed Mother to help them, protect them, guide them all through their lives. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus, my Lord. And we place all these children into your holy hands, Blessed Mother, in your arms as a mother. We place all the children in the world in your motherly arms. And we ask you to keep them there until they grow up to become an adult. And when they become an adult, bring them also, continue to bring them to your son so that they can be responsible adults that can bring the kingdom of your son to all the ends of the earth. In Jesus name we pray and we thank you Blessed Mother. As we say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We may have... Um, times in our life where we were not understood or we feel we were not understood by our mother and if that happened in in one's life that causes um, a lot of sadness you know the heart suffers for that and there is always that emptiness well today i'm here to invite you in the name of jesus to pray to mary to ask her to come in and and feel those emptiness those little spaces in our heart that could be empty of that motherly love. 